This is Twit. It's been a while since we've talked about automotive vehicle security or lack thereof. Okay, so first, our longtime listeners will recall our coverage of Sammy Kamkar and his development of what he named the the roll jam attack back then uh and i think it was 2015 sammy demonstrated a 30 dollar device that was capable of sniffing and jamming a car's constantly changing rolling codes and we're talking about like for the remote you know door open and car starts and and like trunk open stuff right uh which as we know many car manufacturers use to unlock and start their vehicles uh and also uh, to open garage doors sammy's roll jam system was effective against both microchip technologies so, named Keylock, K E E L O Q, Keylock Access Control System, and also the so called high security rolling code generator, which was being produced by National Semi. And since it was able to subvert either of those two most popular technologies, it gave its perpetrator access to vehicles made by Chrysler, Daewoo, Fiat, GM, Honda, Toyota, Volvo, Volkswagen, Jaguar, and those using third-party add-on security systems from Clifford and Sherlock. And it was also effective against a wide variety of garage door openers, which all used the same chips made by Microchip and National Semi. Okay, now, as we know, rolling codes are similar to the pseudo-random numbers produced by today's six-digit one-time password, right? Or or TOTP, time-based authentication systems. But those systems encrypt a sequential counter, rather, that is, the the one-time, like the rolling codes, encrypt a sequential counter rather than a time-of-day clock. Both sequential counter and time-based systems are designed Specifically, you know, the, the, what they're used for is to thwart replay attacks. Unlike a password, which is inherently susceptible to replay attack, you get someone's password, you just use it, right? Uh, not so with these one-time uh, tokens. In the case of a counter-based scheme, a legitimate rolling code is valid only until it is received by the lock, which then advances its own internal counter to expire the code which it just received, which also prepares it to receive the next expected code. What Sammy demonstrated to the world back in 2015 was that the system was cute, but that it was not strong enough to stand up to an active attacker. And what Sammy came up with was kind of brilliant. This is little $30 device would be placed somewhere near a locked car or garage. When its owner attempted to unlock their car, Sammy's gadget would receive and store the first code while also jamming its reception to block it from working. So the car's owner would think, huh, and push the unlock button to try again. The second time, Sammy's device would again receive and block the reception of the second code. But then it would immediately forward the first code it had intercepted the first time, thus unlocking the car or opening the garage as its owner expected. The first code would work because the car or the garage door opener had been blocked from receiving it the first time, right? Which would leave Sammy's device holding the second and still unused code, which the receiving device would now be primed to expect and which could then be used to place its owner's, you know, in place of its owner's unlocking key, which I just think is so clever, you know. And Sammy's been around a long time. He's done all kinds of cool hacks like this. Okay, so that was then. Way back in 2015, what lessons have been learned since? As it turns out, sadly, not nearly as much as we would hope. 
some student researchers and their associates at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth used a small assortment of off-the-shelf, widely available components to examine the signal being produced by Honda's vehicle unlock and remote start technology. They used the Hack RF1 SDR, you know, SDR, Software Defined Radio, with a laptop, an account on FCCID.io, and G GQRX's SDR receiver software with the GNU Radio Development Toolkit. Just, you know, basically just assemble the off-the-shelf pieces. What they discovered stunned them. The remote keyless system in Honda Civics made for five years from 2016 through 2020, encompassing the Honda Civic models LX, EX, EX-L, Touring, SI, and Type R, all share the same remote keyless entry and engine start system. And the keys for all of those cars produced for five years emit an unchanging, fixed for that car signal encoded using frequency frequency shift keying, you know, FSK, over a carrier at 433.215 megahertz, standard 433 megahertz frequency. The key's various functions, such as door unlock, trunk unlock, and engine start, each emit different codes. But the codes for each function but it's a hard for to me even to believe it never change okay this means and there are now multiple github videos showing this successful unlocking and starting of these honda autos can be achieved simply by replaying the same signals that were earlier produced by and recorded from the key so, what we've had during the intervening years appears to be a significant drop in deployed vehicle security, presumably because nobody was looking and there was no one to hold vehicle manufacturers accountable. Uh, okay, you know, the multiple implications of this are obvious, I'm sure, to our listeners. If someone's key was found while they were at a party or at the gym or wherever... Its various signals could be recorded, you know, kind of offline, as it were, and then replayed at any later time forever to gain access to the vehicle and even to remotely start its engine. Well, remotely, meaning, you know, outside of the car. Uh, or the key signal could be captured and recorded near the vehicle when, when the key is being used in, for example, an employee parking lot. And then the next day, when the vehicle is locked and unattended, it could be readily unlocked and entered. Uh, you know, unlike, for example, the use of a Slim Jim, uh, one of those super thin, you know, aluminum strips with a hook at the end used to unlock a car, which would make any thief quite conspicuous. Anyone watching a remote radio attack, even a police officer, would see the car unlock itself as the thief casually approached and entered the vehicle and, you know, reasonably assuming that the car's owner had just approached and entered. It would help if the uh, thief goes, oh, oh, as he gets in. <laughs> just, you know, just a simulate. Actually, I, think, I think the car probably makes that sound. <laughs> it might, right? right, it would, because it doesn't know, does it? Yeah, it has no idea. It's the same signal that right. the key emits. Okay, Despite this, a spokesman for Honda said they had no plans to update their older vehicles even after researchers released their comparatively trivial proof of concept for this glaring design failure, also know, now known as CVE 2022-27254 
When contacted and asked about this issue, Honda spokesperson Chris Martin said, It is not a new discovery and doesn't merit any further reporting, unquote. <laughs> yeah, and please stop talking about it. Uh, Martin confirmed that, quote, legacy technology utilized by multiple automakers may be vulnerable to, quote, determined and very technologically sophisticated thieves, unquote. <laughs> the trouble is, as we've so often seen, what may have required sophistication at the turn of the century is now available using plug-it-together off-the-shelf technology. A precocious student in elementary school huh. could pull this off. Wow. Amazing. Honda's Chris Martin added that, quote, Honda has not verified the information reported by researchers. <laughs> yeah, and they don't want to. And continuing the quote, and cannot confirm if its vehicles are vulnerable to this type of attack. Honda has no plan to update older vehicles at this time, and there is no indication that the type of device in question is widely used, unquote. Widely used? Okay. How would there be an indication? You know, you want thieves to voluntarily confess? Yeah, I did that. Worked great. Okay, one has to wonder whether Honda owners might get together in a large, dare I say, class and take some action about the fact that the security of the vehicles Honda has sold them as recently as two years ago is so readily compromised. Amazing. Like, you know, it's, it's magic, right? You press the button and your car unlocks. How is this different it's, from it's, what we've talked about before? I mean, it's like way lower tech, Leo. Uh, it like, like, in, like before, you had to be like the, the car sent your key fob a signal, right? And then the key fob had to echo. This is just a blind transmission of a fixed code. You know, <laughs> it's like the remote control on your TV. Oh, that's I mean, terrible. it is it is awful. Is it only Honda? Does anybody else use this? Uh, 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 that's a really good question. Because I doubt it. Honda is the only one, right? I mean, it's probably... Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I mean, it now... And the problem now is it's now public knowledge. It's getting a lot of press. Everybody knows it. We know that a Honda, from Honda's from year 213 through... I mean, 20, 2016 through 2020, five years of Honda Civics... All you have keys with a static code. You'd simply record the code once and then you play it back anytime you want. It's it's just That's terrible. It's unconscionable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Maybe it's true that any of these things can be defeated. And we've talked about them. But do doing it is typically so burdensome that, you know, bad guys don't try. It, it, you know, it matters how high the bar is, you know, and, and I, I didn't put it in the show notes, but, but Martin also said, yeah, you know, there's like Slim Jims that can be used to unlock doors. It's like, hello, yes, but the thief has, you know, is exposed while they're doing it, uh, you know, and so they don't do it. This makes it just, you know, falling off a log easy. Yeah. Wow.